What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today, we are diving into some brand new WWE action figure news. Yes, sir. We got some brand new images posted up to WWE.com. As you guys know, usually about monthly or every other month or about one and a half months in between. Typically, we get a brand new gallery to WWE.com where they talk about new or they don't talk about anything. There's nothing to talk about, Brad. They just revealed the image gallery where their photographers go in and photograph all the new upcoming WWE action figures that should be hitting relatively. Relatively soon. If, if the figures appear in these galleries, it usually means because the figures are coming very soon. And so hopefully that will be the case with all of these figures. We got some really epic stuff. We got to see some new images of some things we saw at WrestleMania. And I think we have a lot of great things going on here, man. And I wanted to give an update on yesterday because I was completely duped yesterday, which I want to apologize for. If you guys remember yesterday, we did the WWE Elite Series 106 and Elite Series 107. Well, apparently the only real legitimate wave is the WWE Elite Series 106. I think what it was is that somebody saw WWE Elite Series 106 and then they just decided to make a WWE Elite Series 107 listing. And because most of the time that we see these things, I didn't think that somebody would take the time to just make up a Elite 107 after having 106 out there. And so I do want to apologize for talking about that yesterday and making a whole video on it when it was not legitimate. So I do apologize for the reporting of WWE Elite Series 107 yesterday. So just know that Elite 107 apparently is not happening. That's it's not real, and maybe we'll get some more information on that coming soon. I hope LA Knight's coming soon, man. LA Knight was in that wave. I could see all those figures coming to fruition, so it looked legitimate to me, so I do apologize for that, but WWE Elite Series 106 does seem to be legit. So, with that being said, man, let's dive into today's news and get into all these brand new images that we have going on here today. So, the first thing that I want to get into, guys, is the new upcoming WWE Ultimate Editions that we have coming soon. We have a few Ultimate Editions here that I want to discuss first off because I feel like the Ultimate Editions are the cream of the crop, man. They are what everybody loves and loves to see, man. Getting into it first, let's look at the ringside exclusive Ultimate Edition Usos Jimmy and Jay Uso 2-pack. Look at these figures, man. I mean, we saw these back at WrestleMania weekend when we toured the Mattel Design Center, and these just look even better in these images. I'm loving the way they look. I like their torsos. I like the way their accessories look. I know they have the John Cena Ultimate Edition feet, but I think they're going to be okay. I'm not that worried about it. I do want to see a new shoe mold, but I think these look really awesome. I'm, I'm happy to see these. Of course, we already know that Jimmy Uso, his haircut is inaccurate. It's not completely there, but I think that all of these look good. You got like a pissed off head sculpt. You got some screaming head sculpts. I feel like you could take the yelling Jimmy and replace the hair and make it into a J. Or you could probably, I mean, I guess since it already kind of technically is J, maybe you could just throw it on a J and get a different Jimmy. You know, we're waiting. We're waiting. We're going to see what we can do on some surgery. Maybe we can fix up Jimmy and J and make them Look, look more like themselves. But both of these look great, man. You got them with their chains, their championships, the bloodline hat, We The Ones black shirts, and the packaging looks immaculate on these. I am very excited for these. I even like the details that you have going on on these joggers. This looks to be a new mold. I think this is a new mold. At least that's what I'm looking at here. They have like the sculpted uh, like padding style stuff on the knee pads or on the knee pad area, like right there on the sculpted knee. Their back pockets are just painted on, which I think that's just a regular Usos crop we've seen in the past, but these legs look to be like a new mold, and I hate that they don't have lower leg cut, man. That right there just makes me sick in 2023. I can't stand that, man. I like to have a lower leg rotation, and it doesn't matter what figure it is. I like to see lower leg rotation. It just makes the figure feel more firm and not as stiff, and it allows for better posing, I find, but these figures look immaculate. You got the bloodline down the leg there. These look so sick. I'm so excited for these, these Usos, and hopefully, I know they're supposed to come in relatively soon, but I hope that we wait a little bit because I'm going to be out of town next week and I won't be able to review this set until I get back if they do arrive, but damn, these look good. These look so good, and I can't wait to do our top 10 Ultimate Edition countdown. Maybe these guys will find themselves on there, but these look immaculate. The next Ultimate Editions that we're getting into, guys, is the Amazon exclusive Survivor Series jaw-dropping debuts Ultimate Edition Undertaker and Gobbledygooker 2-pack. Of course, we saw these back. It was like the like 4 a.m. on the day of the opening of the Super Superstore and WrestleMania. These got put up for pre-order on Amazon. They look fantastic. A very unique set. Everybody was mind blown at this, right? We had Johnny Gargano coming out in the gobbledygooker outfit at WrestleMania. This is the most unique two-pack you'll see out there from Mattel. We have the Undertaker as well. This gobbledygooker, I cannot wait to see how this thing feels in hand. Such a unique figure. 
I guarantee a lot of people are going to put this at their number one ultimate edition of the year. I can't really say that until I get it in hand, of course, and we're going to play around with all those things, but you get so many unique molds going on here with this gobbledygooker, and they put it together with the Undertaker here. And the Undertaker looks good. I like the, the jacket or the entrance coat. The tie has a nice color to it. I feel like they make him too tan here in these figures, but I feel like it creates kind of a sense of realism, and it kind of brings out the details of the face rather than how having him in the pale skin tone, but I don't know. You guys can let me know what you think of that, but I do like that you have black gloves and gray gloves. I think that's really awesome that you can get that two-in-one in a single figure. You have a pissed off Undertaker head sculpt. Great stuff here. Great stuff here in this two pack. I cannot wait to get this one in hand. And then we're looking at the Ruthless Aggression Ultimate Edition Rob Van Dam. A dream Ultimate Edition for me. It was on my list for a very long time. This is a figure I've been begging for Mattel for nearly a decade, bro. Probably at a decade. And this figure looks so good. I, I can't believe that we finally have it here. You got the WWE Championship steel chair accessory. You have like your finishing move style head sculpt with the hair blowing in the wind. The gear looks good. I like the singlets. You know, I don't like the mouth wide open head sculpt. At least it doesn't look like they're showing it in the same light. You guys remember at WrestleMania, it looked very odd. I'm still not liking some of the stuff we have here in that head sculpt, but I do like the blank expression, the kind of like just little smirk. It looks just like RVD. Then you have the smiling head sculpt, which is probably the best head sculpt. They've used that one for years though. It's just repainted, but the gear looks great. Definitely going to be switching out these knee pads. I can't stand these knee pads for RVD. You can't, you can't bend the damn knee, man. So you gotta, like pun intended, you can't bend the van damn knee. So we're gonna have to definitely get in there on surgery, fix this guy up, see what we can do here. This is probably gonna be one of those that I see and I get. I see it on the shelf and I'm obtaining it. Probably one of my favorite Ultimate Editions. It, I, I don't know if it's my favorite of all time, but it's up there. I think this just looks wonderful. It's not perfect by any stretch and, you know, a, a more colorful gear is probably coming down the line sometime soon, hopefully. And I think that since you have this mold, you have to make a mainline RVD ultimate and hopefully maybe we'll get that in the next few sets but next up is going to be the ultimate edition Brock Lesnar now this is another one that I just think kind of missed the mark in some ways I think it's exciting I wish they would have went with the skull in the back of the trunks instead of like the spinal tattoo at the bottom there for the vertebrae you know with like the white decal also I've seen some sharings and rumblings online that apparently his back tattoo is way too big. I haven't done the research myself, but I'm going to take it. I saw some comparisons with this figure and the Ultimate Edition Series 15 figure, and apparently the Ultimate Edition 15 Brock Lesnar figure had much better accurate tattoo deco, and so that kind of baffles me why they would change it up so drastically. You'd think they would just throw on the... Ultimate Edition 15 torso, and I know that I think he had like meat hook tattoos now. Compared to back then when they had this Ruthless Aggression look, he didn't have those meat hooks, I don't think. And so maybe that's exactly why they did that. They had to redeco it and they just did it too big. But that is kind of a weird thing that they did. And I guess you could just switch the torso, but then you're getting into weird stuff. I don't know, man. That's just... I guess at the end of the day, it's not the biggest deal, but it's certainly a, one of those just head scratcher things that's like, what the hell's going on here? But I, I'm not a big fan of these head sculpts either. I said it back at WrestleMania as well. I just think they look a bit odd, especially in certain lighting. And I, I just feel like his head sculpt almost looks like AI generated or something. Like, it just looks a bit odd. It's like, I, I can't even describe it. It's almost like he has a thumb head or something like that. Like, I, I don't even know, man. You guys can let me know down in the comment section below. I think my favorite one is just the straight face. I think it does kind of have, like, that sleepy Brock Lesnar look. But I love Brock Lesnar. I love this look of Lesnar. This is definitely a must cop for me, but... I just wanted to address some of those things, and you guys can let me know down below what you think about that. And then the next thing we're diving into is going to be this new cage playset, man. Look at this new cage playset. It's a classic WWF classic cage playset. Now, this is this looks like something that's going to be Target exclusive. I don't think they came out and said it, but it looks like the box art and stuff like that, anything Legends related is typically going to be at Target. So I think this is going to be Target exclusive. Climb the cage to victory. You got the blue cage. You, got, you get the ring there. You got some Ultimate Editions in the ring. I think, you know... I could see some kids buying this. I mean, who cares about the era? I, I just think people are going to be excited for a steel cage. But I feel like the modern steel cage play sets at this size kind of show for them sometimes, if I'm not mistaken. You guys can let me know what you think there. But this is really cool for displays. I know a lot of people are going to be wanting this just to display, you know, their legends and stuff like that. I think that the cage makes for a cool background you could use for other things like backstage areas, things of that nature. And then the little ring is great just for displays as well. You could put all kinds of different characters in there and all of that different stuff, but you guys can let me know what you think there. I thought it was pretty cool. I don't know if I'll cop this one. We'll see about that, but 
Maybe uh, it could be something that we check out on the channel. We may review it. We'll have to, you know, play that by ear, of course. But diving into some elite figures that we have, man. We have some Ruthless Aggression elites here. Starting out first, do have the set with Edge, Tory Wilson, and JBL. This is another set that we saw a while back. I do own the Tory Wilson. I do not own JBL or Edge. This Edge figure is certainly one that I'm trying to track down. And apparently this is supposed to be hitting retail relatively soon. And everybody's worried about the Undertaker, Bischoff, and Stone Cold Steve Austin set because this is, I think, serious. Series 5 of the Ruthless Aggression Elites, and Steve took to the forums, and he did say that the Eric Bischoff wave is supposedly going to be on the SummerSlam WWE action figure like palette deal, you know, like where you go in there and it's like a figure display and it's got like the shelving in it and it's going to have SummerSlam on it and then it's going to have a bunch of figures in it. Apparently that wave of Ruthless Aggression Elites with Taker, Stone Cold, and Eric Bischoff will be a part of that, so... That should hit around SummerSlam time or shortly before SummerSlam, apparently. And so this this Edge set has hit before those figures, apparently. That's what the story is so far. But this Edge figure looks good. Can't wait to get my hands on it. I still haven't even opened my Tory Wilson. I've tried to find a way to plug that into a video, but I just haven't had an opportunity to. Maybe we can plug that in here this week or something like that. But outside of the Edge figure, the Tory Wilson, and the JBL, we also have a look at the other next set, which is going to be the Rock, the Miz, and MVP. Now, this Rock figure is very good. It's not my favorite head sculpt. It does look like it is a repeat of the Elite 31 head sculpt, and I'm not a big fan of that head sculpt, but I, you know, back at Mania, we saw this figure. I think the tattoo looks really good. You have an accurate torso for this era of rock, which is very important to me. I think it represents him well here. The belt buckle, the Brahma Bull belt buckle is so sick, man. It looks perfect on this crotch piece. I, I don't know if we're ever going to get reuse out of that, which is very unique that they went that way because that looks like, uh, I don't know when else you could use this crotch piece, but maybe they'll find a way to plug it in somewhere. But this looks good. It reminds me of Here Comes the Pain. This is a, his alternate gear that you could wear in Here Comes the Pain. So this is perfect for me. Rock figure looks really good. We've been waiting on this version of Rock in this look for a very long time. And then next up, we do have the Miz here. This is my least favorite figure of Miz or my least favorite look of Miz. This figure doesn't look bad. He's got the eyeliner and the weird accessories and stuff like that. He's got the gloved hands. And apparently these are newly sculpted glove hands, as Bill told us in our interview back at the Wrestlemania Superstore, but you know, I'm not a big Miz guy, and it does look like they're using like Elite 93 Cesaro boots is what it looks like. I could be wrong about that, but that's the vibe I'm getting here, but the paint deco looks good. It's not my favorite look of Miz. This is, I hate that they wasted a spot in the Ruthless Aggression line for this Miz figure, but it is what it is. It looks okay. I'll definitely be picking it up for review, but there is the Miz, and then we also have MVP here. Now, I wish the gear was different. They also gave him the Rey Mysterio hands again, but I like the way this figure looks. Even though I would like to see his debut gear or one of his like bright and colorful blue or purple or one of those gears. I still like the black and white and silver. It's actually a really clean look and the figure photography on this figure looks really good in these images. I just think the colors pop off nice even if it doesn't have you know all the colors of the rainbow. You know it's not Skittles up here but it does have a very unique look to it and I think that this figure looks fantastic. The head sculpt looks fantastic and it looks to be just a repaint of Elite One MVP which tells you a lot about the sculpt of the Elite One head sculpt. So we've come a long way over 100 sets later and we're still seeing this figure but it looks really good and so I can't really complain because I think they nailed some of the details on this figure. So that is the Ruthless Aggression Elites. I think that most, for the most part, most of those figures look pretty damn good. And then we also have a look at some upcoming basics. Now these basic figures, bro, they look weird to me. At least some of them look weird to me. Uh, you have Rey Mysterio, Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes, Ronda Rousey, and Tommaso Ciampa. This Randy Orton figure does not look bad, but it's just your run-of-the-mill Randy Orton. Good head sculpt on there. I thought it was a new head sculpt when we first saw this back at the Mattel Design Center in LA, but it doesn't look like it is. It looks to be a repeat of the Elite, but it looks good. You know, it's not yeah, anything earth-shattering. It's just a black attire Randy Orton. Tommaso Ciampa's figure is really good, and he's the chase, and both of these figures look good. These are actually really damn good basics here. The paint apps look good. I love the green and pink attire. The knee pads are really sweet. I could see some people using that for some different guys, maybe some like fantasy gears or something. Tommaso Ciampa's head sculpt looks really good. It is the Elite 69 head sculpt, I do believe. Or it might be the ringside exclusive, or they share the same head sculpt and it's just the same exact thing there. But the Tommaso Ciampa looks good. We also have Ronda Rousey. This head sculpt 
is one of those that looks AI generated. Like, look, what is this head sculpt, bro? What is this head sculpt? She just looks so odd to me here. And this is such a funny looking figure. It's like her features are too big for her face almost. Like her head, like her feature, like her eyes, nose, and mouth take up like 89% of her face or something like that. It just looks so weird. Am I, I, I don't know. It's just an odd looking figure image. And I feel like this, this figure right here looks memeable for sure. And then we also have suited Cody. We've talked about this. I just think that suited figures look too damn bulky, man. I don't know what it is. They're just not fun, you know? Like, I want to be able to pose around my suited figures. Like, you know, AEW and Jazzwares, I think they do those figures so much justice. I am not feeling that here. And I think the elite builder figures, for the most part, are pretty poseable. Maybe we could get, like, a Build-A-Figure suited Cody would be really cool. But apparently, we're moving into a non-suited Build-A-Figure era. But, you know, it's not a bad figure. I think if you're just going to have him standing there, it's not bad. I'll definitely grab it if I find it at retail, but... I just think this leg mold and these basics and the bulkiness, it's just its just not as good as it could be, and it really bothers me. And then we also have this Rey Mysterio. This Rey Mysterio basic, man. What is this? This is such an odd-looking basic for me, man. I just feel like the proportions are all off. I hate the head sculpt. I don't know why his, his left shoulder is black and his right shoulder is not. I don't know if this was, like, sleeveless or he left one sleeve on the shirt. I, again, I, I haven't, I don't know what they're referencing here. The t-shirt torso does look good, though, I will say, for, like, future references when we get this, you know, figures from Mattel and they end up doing t-shirt molds. I think that looks really good and natural. I think that could work for different guys in t-shirts and promo gears and things. But other things on this head sculpt and figure look so weird. I just feel like the proportions are weird. They use the old school Rey Mysterio hands and armbands or gauntlets. So that's like the like elite, like 18 hands and, and gauntlets on there, which is odd to just bring it back randomly. I don't know, just a lot of weird stuff going on with this Rey Mysterio. But that also reminds me, seeing this figure, we do have an Ultimate Edition Rey Mysterio coming soon, like the Fan Takeover one with Seth Rollins, and I'm sure at San Diego Comic-Con we will be getting more information on that. And I I always do this, but I'm like trying to plan like a last-second Hail Mary trip to San Diego Comic-Con. I don't know if it's going to take place. If it does take place, I'm going to lose my mind, but I'm I, I don't know how it's going to work out. I'm not like holding my breath on the scenario, but... I might do one of those classic MDT, book it at the last possible second, throw up a Hail Mary at the buzzer and try to make it happen. We'll see about that. But I think that is every single figure. No, 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 no. We do have a couple Superstar figures. I want to get into the Superstar figures. We have our Vader figure and we have Captain Lou Albano. And these figures just look so damn good, man. Both of these look so good. Superstars figures are so awesome. And I wish that I was more consistent with these. I wanted to do a full set of these, but I could not find Series 2 or Series Series 3 or Series... Like, I cannot find them. And I hate when you have to, like, order every single one to find them. And then you gotta get Defenders. And they cost, like, 25 bucks a piece. But they look so damn good. And they're awesome. I love these figures. The cloth goods on these guys and everything going on with them. They're such a unique mold. And I've seen people make really cool customs with them. And it just pisses me off that I, I am not up to date on these figures. But... They look so good, and I love both of these. That is those two figures. I think those are two of the best Superstars figures we may see this year. And then rounding it out, that is every single WWE Elite figure image that we have seen today in the WWE Action Figure News, man. I'd love to know where you guys stand on all of these figures down in the comment section below. I'd love to know where your thoughts are, where your heads are at on all of these different things. What do you think of these Ultimate Editions, these Elites, and things like that? Again, San Diego Comic-Con coming very, very soon, man. We are just under a month away, or not even a month, we're like three weeks away, I think July 20th, and that is in three weeks, three weeks, and it will be time for San Diego Comic Con, where we have the big day of reveals, and maybe I'm out there, maybe I'm not, we'll have to see, but if I am, I will definitely be doing coverage, definitely get some interviews in, and we will definitely break everything down here on the channel, regardless if I'm there or not, but that is going to wrap up today's news video, man, thank you guys so very much for watching, hope you guys did enjoy, before we get out of here, of course, a huge shout out to our patron members of the MDT YouTube channel, always appreciate those guys, continued support means a lot to me and the MDT YouTube channel, if you guys are interested in that, check out the links in the description below, but I am getting out of here, man, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys, I'm getting out of here, see you guys in the next time, have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later.